Hello, and welcome to the 11th Ghost Light Tour of the Smith Opera House in Geneva, New York. Since you can't come to the Smith right now for our history tours, we'll bring the history to you. I'm Chris Woodworth, and I'll be your tour guide. So without further ado, here's episode 11, Cloud Master. A canopy of clouds moving across a field of twinkling stars is used in the atmospheric theater to complete the illusion that pictures are being viewed beneath nocturnal skies. Thus begins the text of an ad for one of the Brenkert projectors, the signature brand of equipment for movie palaces that were designed to bring the outdoors in. When the Smith Opera House reopened as the movie palace Shines Geneva Theatre in March 1931, it boasted a Master Brenograph F7 projector, designed and built by the Brinkert Light Projection Company in Detroit, Michigan. In his book, The Best Remaining Seats, The Golden Age of the Movie Palace, Ben M. Hall describes the Master Brenograph as a super magic lantern, capable of projecting song slides for the organ interludes, an endless variety of scenic effects by means of multiple lenses, and moving slides and intricate fades and dissolves. The day before Shine's Geneva Theatre opened, the Geneva Daily Times wrote, The ceiling is of a deep blue, and at the front and sides it ends in a gentle slope, suggesting the curve of the sky which it represents. As the result of an ingenious lighting system, stars will twinkle in the sky while hidden machines will project moving masses of clouds across the blue. Ben M. Hall notes that in the 1928 catalog for the Master Brenograph, the featured effects included Aurora Borealis, Babbling Brook, Blizzard, Descending Clouds for imaginary ascension trip, Flying Angels, Flying Birds, Flying Butterflies, Fire and Smoke, flames, lightning, fast-moving dark storm clouds, slow-moving fleecy clouds, moving river, ocean waves, rain, sandstorm, snow, volcano in eruption, with flowing lava and rain of fire and ashes, waterfall, waving American flag, flying fairies, flying airplanes, falling roses, twinkling stars, rainbow and rising bubbles. The Master Brenograph was a versatile machine, and yet, as a 1928 advertisement declares, projects everything but the motion picture. Operating the Master Brenograph took specialized skill and timing. In a 2009 issue of The Magic Lantern Gazette, Mark Butterworth details the technical elements of the Brenograph and how it would have been run by a talented projectionist. The lamp houses of the Brenograph contain 75 ampere vertical feed carbon arc burners. The Brenograph contains an upper and a lower lantern, which are run separately, each needing constant attention. Butterworth notes that the only direct linkage is a fader on the front. He goes on to assert that the arc feed needed adjustment every 30 to 45 seconds. We can only imagine how warm it must have been standing so close to this machine, constantly making small adjustments to keep it running. In addition to adjusting the burners, the projectionist would move the lanterns forward and backwards along rails in order to focus the images on different surfaces within the theater or on the stage. Brenographs could project still slides, used primarily for ads, or panoramas. Some were outfitted with an aluminum canister similar to a movie reel container with a clockwork drive mechanism. This canister rotated, facilitating the appearance of an image moving across the space. For the Smith, the Brenograph was presumably used to project clouds moving across the interior sky. This special effect accounts for the nickname often given to projectors such as these, cloud machines. In a booklet that was published on the history of the Master Brenograph, Thomas J. Matheson recounts how ubiquitous the projectors were, asserting, In the late 1920s, every deluxe movie palace had, as part of its requisite equipment, at least one Master Brenograph F7. And yet, as he goes on to explain, with the coming of sound films, the Depression, and major changes in theatrical exposition after 1930, most of the Brenographs were pushed aside, forgotten, and eventually sold for scrap. 
Today, only a few brenographs survive at all, with a mere handful of them still operable and in their original locations. It is therefore all the more astounding that the Smith Opera House is still in possession of its master brenograph. Long since inoperable, the projector is stored adjacent to the projection booth. When it's safe for our in-person history tours to resume, ask to take a peek at our cloud machine. For more information on the history of the Smith Opera House, please visit our history blog, which can be found on our website, thesmith.org. You can also learn how to become a member of the Smith and how to make a donation. We'll see you next time for another ghost-like glimpse of the history of the Smith.